This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You can build your own beautiful website or online store with this all-in-one platform. Hello everyone, this will be another episode of Ways to Fill Your Sketchbook and I recently moved my studio so I haven't done one of these in a while but I'm excited to look at the prompts. Basically this is a series where you give me ideas and I put them in this little jar and then I draw one and it's like an, a way you can fill a sketchbook page and then I do that and I do some sketches in my sketchbook. So let's choose one. I kind of want to dump them out because there's like pencil shavings in here and it's kind of it's kind of messy let's get a nice shuffle I'll pick this one put them back in also if you have any ideas please let me know tiny houses made of everyday things okay this isn't something I would have drawn on my own so I guess we're gonna be drawing some tiny houses today and if you're wondering about this um, it's just like honestly I don't know what happened Luckily, I don't draw with my right hand, so we're gonna be fine. So now I'm going to talk about what I drew and why and how it relates to the prompt and my process for this sketchbook spread. So the prompt was tiny houses made of everyday things. And the first thing I thought of was, hmm, can I turn a backpack into a little house? Because I like to draw backpacks and I like to draw them on my characters. So I just looked up a photo of a backpack and I tried to draw a backpack and put some doors on it. Now, I don't know if like making an everyday object into a little house is just like, you just like slap a door on it, but that definitely is one way to do it. So I kind of started off that way. Um, and like I mentioned in the video, my right hand was, I like pulled something in it um, and it hurt pretty bad for a while. Um, I think it's okay now, but because of that, my left hand was doing a lot of extra work, just like to open doors and like, just like doing things. So my left hand felt very shaky and I actually recorded the first drawing a few days before I recorded the rest of the footage because my hand just felt like it wasn't able to draw properly. It felt like very weak and that wasn't even the hand that I injured. It was the other hand because it was kind of picking up the slack, but I really liked the way the backpack one turned out. Um, it was pretty fun to do. I decided I just wanted to work in ink and colored pencil because I'm sort of like, it sort of reminds me of the Inktober days and this is like the sort of style I used, I'm pretty sure. I'm just using my Terracotta Prismacolor and doing some inking on top with a um, like Tombow brush pen, one of my favorite brush pens. And the bunny footage is a little bit blurry in the beginning, which is really sad, but I eventually fix it. But I, I, I thought it would be fun to turn a plushie into a, a little house. So it's like as if, um, something found this like abandoned plush and they added a door and um well a couple of doors i think i made the feet windows um this one's a little rough around the edges but i just kept telling myself like this is just a sketchbook page it doesn't have to be perfect i'm just kind of like i'm just drawing for the sake of drawing not really for for anything else well i am filming it that's another reason um oh the footage is finally clean yeah, I'm trying to be like more forgiving with myself, especially if it's in a sketchbook and I'm doing like ink on colored pencil, which is something I haven't really done in a while. Um, I kind of just let the imperfection stay, but there there are some later on that I like cover up with a post-it note and redraw. Um, it's really hard to not get too perfectionistic about things. The next little house I wanted to do was a little acorn house, which has probably been done a lot, but I just wanted to do it and see what I could come up with. I just basically just added a door onto an acorn and a little window and I thought it was cool that the, I thought it was cool that the hat of the acorn kind of looks like roof shingles. So it kind of lends itself to the little house theme because it already looks like it, oh, I should have made the, the stem a chimney. I think that's actually like a pretty cute idea and I might, I might make something out of this sketch. And this is something I wouldn't have drawn if it wasn't for the prompt, so. 
If you are thinking about doing this prompt, you should give it a try because you might come up with something that you never would have thought to do before. And that always happens when I make these videos, even though sometimes I'll get a prompt and I'll, I'll be thinking like, oh, I really don't have the energy to draw this. This is kind of outside of my comfort zone, but I'll do it anyway. And then I will usually come up with something that's that's pretty fun, of a pretty fun idea. I'm getting close to the end of this sketchbook. It's been a long time coming because I've just been doing a lot of other stuff, a lot of other drawings for other things and not really sketching because a lot of my my sketching time kind of goes towards like client work, but I really want to finish this sketchbook soon and show you and I'm excited for when that day comes. I just need to like sketch more. Also, if you have any ideas to put in the prompt jar, make sure to leave a comment. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I uh, every time I post a video, I'll go through the comments and see what other suggestions people have and then I'll add them to my little my little jar. I call it a jar, but it's like a, it's just like a cup. It's like a plastic cup that slides onto my pegboard. It's from Ikea, but it's easier to just call it a jar. But um, I had a lot of fun making the little acorn house. I think the backpack one, the bunny and the acorn are my three favorite, but you'll see the other ones I do. And now I'd like to take a quick break to thank this video's sponsor, which is Squarespace. As you may know, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform where you can build whatever kind of website you want. You can have a portfolio, you can have an online store, and you can customize it however you want very easily to fit whatever aesthetic you want for your site. I've actually revamped my website with Squarespace and it's live now at gelarts.com if you want to go look at it. I think it's very clean and simple and I really like the way it turned out and it was very easy to do. Something I love about Squarespace are their portfolios and galleries because since I'm an artist, that's kind of like the main thing I need a website for is to display my work because if a client wants to work with me they will probably go to my website and look at my portfolio so I need to make sure that the images are presented nicely and Squarespace has automatic image scaling and they make it really easy to have portfolios and galleries that look great. If this is interesting to you head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com slash gel arts and you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and on to the rest of the video. I really like these brush pens. They're from Tombow. I'll link them in the description. Um, they're kind of my like go-to brush pens. They just have, uh, I feel like I have good control with them and you can do thick and thin lines. It's like the perfect line weight for me. So I had a lot of fun using them. The next house was a flower pot house, which I thought would be like kind of generic. Um, and I kind of struggled with the perspective cause I was going too fast and my hand still felt weak, like it couldn't like draw straight lines or ellipses properly. Um, ellipses are really hard to draw in perspective, even though I was sort of doing like an isometric perspective, I still just like didn't put much thought into the perspective or like structure of it. Um, and whenever I rush that aspect of a sketch, it always ends up looking wonky. But I think I kind of pulled it together in the end with the shading and all that, but I'm not too sure if it came together the best way possible, but I don't think it looks bad and I think it's like a good starting point for if I wanted to make this into an illustration. Also, make sure you let me know which one is your favorite, which little house is your favorite once you've seen them all. Um, it, I'm curious to see. I, I don't know if I was that creative with this, honestly. I just tried to pick objects that I kind of thought would be like cute houses. Like I didn't want to pick anything too strange because I wanted to still like enjoy the drawing and not challenge myself too much but it was still definitely a challenge because some of them i had to like start over and halfway through i was like oh this is not turning out like you can kind of see how wobbly my lines are in this one um but sometimes it's nice to just like not worry too much and just like put a sketch out there and just like um and just like see what it looks like when you don't stress over it too much the next one was a watering can and it's even more wobbly and not very good Honestly, I don't know why I felt the more the more I drew this day the rustier I felt which is like the opposite of what usually happens So I don't know what was going on there I don't think inking is like my main medium But I do like to do it from time to time and I'm glad that I did and I also realized a mistake in this one when I Was editing it just now the the handle doesn't connect to the like side of the watering can the bushes block it, but I guess that could still happen and it could still kind of make sense, but like you still can't really see where it connects, which is weird. 
Then I tried to do a trash can turned into a mini house, but the perspective really threw me, the ellipses really threw me, because um, I just like wasn't doing the perspective properly. And I do think I'm capable of doing it properly, I just like, I was just like rushing it and trying to draw fast, because I was starting to feel more and more rusty, but I still wanted it to be something cool. I was thinking it could be like an apartment, like a little mini apartment because it's so tall, but um, I was just going pretty fast and I made basically all the doors on all of these the same. I just like doing a thick framed door. Um, I like doing like rounded doors because I think they're pretty charming and they kind of go with that like um, fairy garden type of aesthetic, which is what I wanted to do for this, sort of like a fairy garden theme. Yeah, this is the one that I covered up because I was just like, I want to try this again, so I'm just going to cover it. In hindsight, I wish I didn't cover it and I wish I just drew on another section of the page, but sometimes you just feel this like shame. You're like, oh, I don't like the way this looks. I have to cover it up now. And then you feel like a little bit better once it's covered. Usually I don't like to cover whole drawings. Um, I do it from time to time, but sometimes I prefer to cover portions of the drawing if you want to correct something that you've done in ink. But this time I just like covered the entire thing. And I tried to like make it a little bit better, like I tried to improve the perspective, but I don't think the design is as good and it's it's not terrible, but I also like am not really inspired by this one. But that's no big deal, you can't like everything that you sketch. So I tried to make it look as cute as I could and I just kind of moved on because I didn't really know where else to take it. Um, something that I really like to do and I think it's a really good workflow for if you have um, pencil and ink drawings. You take a colored pencil, you sketch, and then you do some inking on top, and then you take that colored pencil from your sketch and you shade it with that. And I was trying to do that for these, and I think it just kind of gives it a lot of dimension and it kind of pulls the sketch together and kind of like makes the sketch look like it's actually part of the drawing instead of the underdrawing. I think I saw Loish do this a lot in her like Inktober ink pen drawings and I was like that looks like a great technique that I want to do. This last one is probably the worst one. I wanted to take a cardboard box and imagine like how an animal could like turn it into their own house and it just like it's just really wonky and not great. I'm not very proud of that one but basically the idea was that the like fold out the little flaps of the box was like a little roof awning and then the other two were like folded upwards to be the roof and then like a little clear top and um I don't even know if it has a chimney but I was trying to add the edge of the cardboard and I was just like having fun putting pen on paper while knowing that it really looks wonky and not great. Some days you just you just can't draw as well as you usually can and that's fine. I am fine with that. It's just a sketchbook. Um, and then I just wanted to draw some like extra little things on the page, so I just wanted to draw a little window detail. And as soon as I did that, um, I drew some flowers on the bottom corner and then I was like, I'm done drawing for today. I had a lot of fun with this prompt. Um, it challenged me in a good way. I could like do some comfort drawing as well as challenge myself at the same time. If you have any ideas for the prompt jar, please let me know. And let me know which one is your favorite. I think my favorite one in terms of like the way it looks is the acorn house, but my favorite concept is the bunny house, the the plushy house I think is kind of cute. Um, I think I could do a lot with that and change it up. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video, a little chatty sketch with me. Let me know what you're drawing while you're watching this, if you're drawing anything or if you're doing anything while you're watching this video, let me know. So thanks so much for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in my next video.